Hello guys, this is uh, section 1.6, acceleration near Earth surface. It's about gravity. So it is about gravity and is gravitational acceleration. Air resistance exists. However, air resistance is often ignored when solving physics problems. Free fall is a motion of the object subject only to the influence of the gravitational acceleration, not air resistance. Often we say air resistance is negligible. So that means that the object that is falling is free falling. Any object will fall at the same rate in absence of air resistance. The value of the acceleration to gravity, which is g, in North America is a constant. It is at 9.8 meter per second square. Realistically, this value is not really 9.8 for two reasons. First, air resistance exists. So, first reason is influence of the air resistance. Second is uh, Earth is not a perfect sphere. So that means that depends on location where you are. Usually in North America, we use the value 9.8, but that varies based on where you are relative to a center of the earth. And we're gonna talk a little bit later about this. So the air resistance. An object is falling in air is a subject of air resistance and therefore it's not free falling. Air resistance depends on its cross-sectional area and its speed. Let's talk about cross-sectional area first. The same piece of paper will fall differently if it is flat or crumbled because they have a different cross-sectional area. So that means that flat piece of paper, when it goes through air, has to move a lot of molecules of air in its way compared to a crumbled piece of paper. So if we do an experiment on the left with that flat piece of paper and that ball, obviously it's very noticeable. You can try that at home. The flat piece of paper, it is going to fall very, very slow compared to a ball. So if we crumble that piece of paper and make that uh, cross-sectional area comparable to that ball, then you're going to see that a rate of free falling that crumbled paper is going to be comparable to that ball because of the cross-sectional area is comparable. However, why it is not the same, you can think about it but let me give you a couple of reasons. First, cross-sectional area is not exactly the same as a ball. And second one is smoothness. Ball has a shape, aerodynamic shape. Crumbled paper is a random crumble. So that's why manufacturers that produce uh, objects like a train or a, or cars or airplanes that travel through the air to minimize the air resistance influence on their motion, they try to make it as smooth aerodynamics as possible. Another influence of the air resistance is by its speed, the object's speed. So take a look on the diagram on the bottom left. So there's a skydiver that is jumping from helicopter or from hel uh, airplane, doesn't matter. So that means that right after starting to fall through air, both air resistance and gravitational acceleration will impact that skydiver motion. So as the speed increases, air resistance will increase and acceleration will decrease because of that resistance. As a skydiver continue to fall, the acceleration becomes at some point zero. And what we call is like a constant 
as the, as the acceleration is zero, that means the velocity is constant. So that's what we call a terminal velocity because it reaches the maximum possible speed and it doesn't speed up more because the speeding up because of the gravity and slowing down because of the air resistance will balance each other. So that's why you reach at a certain speed when the object falls down and it's going to continue with that constant speed or constant velocity. That's the same idea. And that's how the sky divers actually is, uh, they are reaching that uh, certain speed and, uh, and they cannot really accelerate more. We talked about uh, why uh, a value of the gravitational acceleration is not 9.8 uh, meter per second square. There was a air resistance and we talk about air resistance and the second reason is Earth is not a perfect sphere. So if you take a look on a diagram on a top right, there's a diameter measured from, from pole to pole and diameter measured at the equator level. So if you see the difference there is a 42 kilometers. So that means is the difference is 21 kilometers from the center of the Earth. That means since that uh, uh, at poles, the surface is closer to the center of the Earth, the gravitational pull is stronger. That means that in a different location, you will have a different values of G, stronger at the poles and weaker at equator. And remember that, as I said, perf uh, Earth is not even close to a perfect sphere. If you take a look without water, in a deep ocean, the gravitational acceleration is stronger. The gravitational pull is stronger, obviously, uh, without water. And in a top of mountain, gravitational pull is much, much weaker because at that level, you are further away from uh, center of the Earth. So you should actually have those into consideration. The, how that 9.8 comes, how can we calculate where this 9.8 value came from. So in North America, a radius, average radius from, uh, of the Earth, so distance from center of the Earth to a surface of the Earth is 6,378.1 kilometer. Mass of the Earth is constant. So in grade 12, you're going to see that there is an equation there that you're going to learn. It's a G is equal to G times Me divided by R square, when G is 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11. Mass already is given, radius already is given. If you do that calculation, that will give you 9.8 newtons per kilogram or 9.8 meter per second square. It's a wonderful video from BBC that showed that in uh, presence and in absence of air resistance, how feather and a ball will fall. It's a beautiful to watch when in absence of air resistance, feather and ball will fall exactly the same rate. I highly recommend you to watch it and I'm going to put a link on the bottom of this uh, video for you to watch it. If we do an experiment that we toss a ball upward with initial velocity of 39.2, we know for sure that since the initial velocity is upward and gravitational acceleration is downward, this ball is going to decrease its speed based on this formula v final y is equal to v initial y plus a y delta t. If you just plug those numbers there, it's going to be 39.2 plus 
plus minus 9.8 meter per second square times one second is going to be 29.4 meter per second. Now for displacement, the displacement here is use the formula. V initial y is 39.2 times one second plus half of the minus 9.8 times one square. And if you do that uh, calculation, it's going to be 34.3. After another second, it's going to be 9.8 meter per second less for the same reason. And for a displacement, you can calculate it. It's going to be 24.5 meter less for one second. And that is going to reach 58.8 meter. After exactly one second, it's going to be 9.8. And the displacement is going to be another 14.7. It's going to reach 73.5. And you can easily calculate that using that formula. And finally, after four seconds, it is going to be 9.8 meter per second less of 9.8 meter per second, which means it's going to be zero. And it's going to reach the maximum height of 78.4. Remember this number, 78.4. And remember this number, 39.2. After a ball reaches that maximum height, it's going to stop for a fraction of a second and it's going to fall down. So that is going to be exactly the same as you are on the top of that building and you drop a ball at, uh, at the initial velocity zero. So what is going to happen? It's going to happen after one second. It's based on this formula. Velocity is going to be 9.8 meter per second downward and again using that displacement formula object ball is going to be displaced with 4.9 meter how this 4.9 came from very easy zero times one is zero plus one over two times 9.8 meter per second square down downward times one second square second square and uh, second square cancel and what is left there is a 4.9 meter now after one second it's going to be exactly using the same thing with 19.6 meter per second as a velocity downward and um, as the as a displacement is going to be 19.6 another second is going to be 29.4 so another 9.8 increase of the velocity and for displacement 44.1 and then the finally after four seconds is going to reach 39.2 meter per second and is going to be displaced with a 78.4 meter and i told you remember those two numbers for a velocity 39.2 and for a displacement 78.9 it is exactly the same as you toss that ball upward with the initial velocity of 39.2 is going to reach the maximum height of 78.4 and is going to stop at that moment and is going to fall back again same rate because it is the object is undergoing uniformly accelerated motion due gravity and it, since that gravity is constant in a free fall in absence of air resistance everything is going to be exactly calculated as it is so if we graph the motion of the ball that is uh, tossed upward and then is going to fall downward we know exactly what is going to happen in a position time graph we did that with uh, three seconds instead of four that we did that experiment but we know exactly what is going to happen if we start at a 29.4 then is going to in one second is going to decrease by 9.8 uh, 
another 9.8 after one second, another 9.8 after one second, so reaching zero, and that will be a maximum height because it will fall down because of the influence of gravity. And we know after one second, because of the 9.8 meter per second square, is going to change 9.8 meter per second per second. So it's going to be downward 19.6 after another second and 29.4 after another second. If you see that there's a symmetry of the values, the only thing is going to be a positive on the left and negative on the right. How do we know? We can draw a tangent on those points. You see that it's steeper at the bottom, but it's going to be less and it's going to be zero because it's a horizontal and we know that slope of the horizontal is zero. Then it's going to be negative and negative but uh, faster. So this is how that motion is going to be graphed and we already have done it before. And we can derive velocity time graph and acceleration time graph from that position time graph. And uh, we know at the beginning is a positive is going to reach at a zero and then it's going to go negative as you see here it's going to be negative negative so uh, for acceleration time graph acceleration time graph so this one actually is going to be negative why because the slope of that velocity time graph is negative and if we do that correctly accurately everything done right that value of the slope of the velocity time graph has to be minus 9.8 meter per second square. So that's how we build acceleration time graph and that will be minus 9.8 meter per second. Here's a practice problem using a free fall. A ball is thrown straight up in the air at an initial speed of 24 meter per second. How much time will pass before it's falling straight down at a speed of 14 meters per second? So what is given? So gravitational acceleration is downward, so that means negative 9.8. We keep down as negative. V initial y is up 24 meters per second. We make it positive. V final y is 14 meters per second down. We keep it negative and time is required. So we can use delta t is equal to v final y minus v initial y over a y. We use y subscript because it's a vertical, it's a free fall. Then, since that everything is in a standard unit, we can use those values in the equation. Then we can find time is equal to 3.88. What is the ball, ball's maximum height? How do we know that is maximum height? We know that final velocity on a y-axis has to be zero. So when it reaches the maximum height, the ball will stop, cannot go further because that will not be maximum. So it will stop and then will fall down. So we know the final velocity at that point is zero. So then we can use that formula that doesn't have time. So we know final velocity has to be zero. Zero square is still zero. Minus 24 meter per second all square divided by 2 times 9.8 meter per second. So minus and minus becomes plus. So that's why it's a plus 29.4 meter. So that's about this uh, for uh, section 1.6. I hope you uh, enjoyed it and uh, learned something for it from it. And uh, let's let's do some practice. Let's do more practice.